Okay, Shalawam, Shalawam, first and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises and glory, okay, to my Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh, by Sham Yahweh Shai, by Sham Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles, okay, of great millstone that teaches truth well, and to the hopeful elect, okay, across the globe, and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters listening and learning. The elect are going to be moved to push this word. The hopeful elect are going to be moved to push this work. The lukewarm ain't going to be. Okay, the lukewarm, guess what the reward's going to be? Death. Okay, the slothful servant, his reward is going to be death. So let's go to, uh, let's start off on 2 Peter's Salakia. 1 Peter's and 10. Wherefore the rather brethren give Diligence, okay. A diligence is an earnest effort, not just doing this truth when you want to do it, doing it because you have to, okay, because you want to, to make your calling and election sure. Because the scriptures tell you in Matthew 22 and 14, many are called but few are chosen, okay. So, how do you make your calling and election sure by doing the things what's pertaining to this word by pushing? For if you do these things, okay, if you stay diligent, if you stay occupied in prophecy, you shall never fall. There's going to be no space for you to fall, okay? The only space there is for you to fall if you're not preoccupied on this work and you're doing something else, okay? So let's go straight to... Matthew's 20... Get straight to the point. This is Matthew 25. Lord, thou del bear with me just a minute. Let's go to 20. And so he that have received five talents came and brought other five talents. Okay. Let's go to 18. Let's go to 19. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And that's what Yahweh is going to do with his servants. He's coming to reckoneth. Check. Okay. He's going to check what you've been doing. Okay, just like when you have a supervisor, what does a supervisor do? Check on you. Okay, verse 20. And so he that had received five talents and came and brought other five talents, saying, And them talents are the things you're good at, the things you can do to your ability. Okay, Lord, thou deliver unto me five talents. Behold, I gained beside them five talents more. Okay, so he made ten, he doubled it. And that's what happens when you actually work at your craft. Yahweh sees that and guess what? He adds things unto you. Verse 21, his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant that has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. A lot of you can't even be faithful over the, the, the little he's given you. You can't even be faithful over that. So ain't no way you're going to be faithful over many things. This is a test to see, are you really going to be faithful? Are you really going to hold your integrity? Are you really going to be pushing this work? Are you just going to be faking it? Okay. I will make the ruler over many things, the kingdom of heaven. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Okay, and that's what we want to do. We want to enter into the joy of the Lord. Okay. Verse 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou live unto me two talents. Behold, I gained two other talents beside him. So he made four. He doubled that. Okay. He was utilizing his skill. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. That has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Okay? The kingdom of heaven. Enter though into the joy of the Lord. And you, we want to enter into the joy of the Lord. That's why we do this work. Okay? Because we want to enter into the joy. Okay? When he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man. Okay? Flattery. Using flattery. Reaping when thou has not sown. And gathering when thou has not strawed. And I was afraid. This was the individual with one talent. And went and hid that talent in the earth. So if you knew that. That the Lord was a stare man. Reaping where that has not sown. Where he's neither worked. You would have done what you were supposed to do. And I was afraid. And went and hid that talent in the earth. So he done, he done the complete opposite. He didn't want to obey. He done the complete opposite. He had this truth and he hid it. Lo, there that had this dying. And he gave it back. His Lord answered and said unto him, The wicked and slothful servant. That's a wicked and slothful servant. So how can you di differentiate between who's a wicked and slothful servant and who's on fire and who's a faithful servant? 
by the ones who ain't doing this work, by the ones who delayed this work, by the ones who ain't doing nothing. That's a wicked and slothful servant. Okay? Thou knewest that I reap what I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Verse 27, that I had all this, therefore, to have put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I would have received my own with usury, which is interest. Take there from the talent from him, and give it unto him which have ten talents. And this is why people's talents get taken away from them, the spirit gets taken off of them. Because they're not utilising what they've been given. They don't appreciate what they've been given. They're ungrateful. Okay? For every, for unto every one that hath shall be given this truth, and hath shall have an abundance. Because this truth is an abundance. This rivers of living water. You're constantly learning new things. But from him that have not, which ain't utilizing what he's been given, shall be taken away, even which he have. The little you have. Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You're going to be reserved for judgment. And a lot of men in this truth are just being reserved for judgment. Because they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And that's the truth. Let's go to um where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Let's go to Luke twenty one. This ain't gonna be a long lesson. Luke twenty one. And here's the warnings. Luke twenty one, this Yahabasha speaking of thirty four. And take heed, beware. Okay, look out. To yourselves, lest any time your hearts be overcharged. So you've got to examine yourself. Okay? Lest your heart lest any time your hearts be overcharged, your mind with what? With surfeiting, okay, overindulging, okay, mirth and drunkenness and the cares of this life. This is why a lot of people they lose focus, they lose that vision. Why? Because the cares of life, and this is what Satan uses, distractions. To keep you off track, to not keep you focused, and so that they come upon you unawares. And this stays going to come upon a load of individuals unaware because they're not watching. Okay, they're not warning the sheep, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Verse 35 for As a snare, what's a snare? A trap. When you set a snare, you set a trap. Shall it come upon all them that dwell upon the face of the earth? Okay. So, what's going to come as a snare upon the, uh, the time that comes upon all the earth? When Yahabashai comes, okay, and when this destruction comes, okay, verse 36, watch ye therefore, this takes a watchman, the scriptures in Isaiah 62, 61 says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls that shall not hold their peace nor night, so that's what a watchman does, he watches for the danger, he warns you, a watchman ain't supposed to be asleep, a watchman don't go, to, a watchman's supposed to be on guard constantly, obviously you have your, your sleep time, but you're supposed to be on guard. In season, out of season. Watch ye therefore and pray always. Why? Because praise is your defense. You're supposed to pray. That ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. What the calamities, the destruction. And to stand before the Son of Man. So if you ain't doing this, you're being a wicked and you're being an evil servant. Idleness teaches much wickedness. Okay, and the Lord's going to spew men out of his mouth because they're taking his truth for a joke. Let's go to Revelations 3 and 15. I know thy works. You see, how was I speaking? That, that, that art neither cold nor hot. You're not cold nor hot. You're in between. You're straddling the fence. You're in that gray area. I would that, I, I would that word cold or hot. So, how was I saying? Look, you're either one or the other. You're either in this truth or you're not. Verse 16. So then, because they are lukewarm, nobody likes anything lukewarm. You don't like your food lukewarm and you don't like your drink. If you're drinking, lukewarm. It's unpleasant. Okay, and that's how the Lord looks at someone who's lukewarm in this truth. And neither cold nor hot. So see, because you're not cold nor hot, but because they are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You're going to get spewed out. Okay? You are going to get spewed out. Because you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not taking this truth seriously. And that's what the Lord does. You're not about this truth. You're not trying, you're not trying, you're not even making that effort. So guess what? You have no need. You're not beneficial to the ministry because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're not building up yourself. You're not working on your talents. 
a lot of guys are coming this just mocking birds or they just do a video because they're, they're, they're scared of what the elder apostles might say. No, you're supposed to be doing it because you want to do it. Not because someone's forcing you to do the work. So with this lesson, I'm going to shut off here. Lord willing, this was edifying. And shout out to the hopeful elect across the globe.